24 of October, his father went to a um, to a bar oh. on, where they sell liquor, yeah. and he became drunk. And then uh, they right. found him in in the river, I dead. That. Later, yeah. some hours later, they found him in the river. Quantas horas? Salió en la mañana, creo que a las cuatro. And at four o'clock in the morning, he, he left the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. He, Murió creo que al mediodía. And like middle of the day they found him dead in the river. Mm -hmm. That's I remember that from last year. Okay. That's very sad. So this is the picture of William, her son getting baptized. And this is William as a baby. And the photographs are very important to them because they have very few. And this is Maria's husband that died, right? Yeah. We donated the stove for Maria three years ago. She was just cooking over an open fire, and it's an Arnold stove, which is the nice thing about it is it can be taken apart and moved, so we'll move it to the new house. But we need to build a concrete pad to put it on in the new house. And um, it'll be in open air in the new house so that she won't have smoke inhalation inside. Is this your food? Mm -hmm. These are very old beets with mold on them. See? Uh huh. See? So, this is, she, we have not delivered food for six weeks so that we could assess her needs. If we're not delivering food, how does she eat? And this is her kitchen, and so she has some, she has six shriveled beets and a. Uh, Okay, that's about it. Typically, if she runs out of food, she picks herbs and boils herbs. For mm -hmm. So this is her kitchen. And in the new house, she has a sink. 
So with the stove, it cuts down on the wood use by about 80% because the heat is contained inside, which really takes care of a big issue for these moms. It's a lot of time in the fields cutting down trees and chopping wood for fuel. So these stoves cost us about 200 to 250 um, for each stove that we purchase, but it's a health um, issue for them to not have so much smoke inhalation and eye issues from cooking over open fire. So it's a very worthwhile expenditure. Yes. Two beds and a stove are still the things I still need. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I'll, I'll make the list. You don't have to do okay. it. Okay. Yeah. How about your school? Yeah. Write it down. No, I'll do Write it. it down. I'll do it for you. See, the soil, the dirt is excellent for hmm. a garden. <gasps> you know? Very proud of him. I know it's very hard. Um, ella dijo que muy por los How difficult it is to be a good student in that house. There's not even a good table to work. Maria Schum came into our program about three and a half years ago when our facilitator Roland was walking down the street and someone came and explained to him that she was a widow and was in dire need of food. So she was living in an adobe brick house on this property and her husband had died of tuberculosis and she had five children that she could no longer feed and she couldn't afford to put them in school. And the roof leaked in the rainy season, which was five months out of the year. She didn't have enough money for food and the school supplies for each child she didn't have money for. School is free in Guatemala, but the parents have to buy the supplies. So Roland called us and sent pictures and we agreed that we had money in the budget for helping them with food every month. We could give them enough food for one meal a day. And we found out that she had a legal title to the land, which is a requirement to build a house for one of the mothers, or else if we build a house and it's not legally titled to them, then someone can take it away. So she had the title, so that was good and we were able to build her the house we're in right now, which is a concrete block with stucco and a painted floor and a roof that doesn't leak and electricity. The weaving doesn't bring in enough money for them to be able to afford food every day. 
yeah. And there's no social services in this country for people in the mountains that are widows. <coughs> There's no um, church services that gives out food there and school supplies. There's no government services, um, food banks, social security income, retirement income, savings plans like we have in the state. Her two oldest daughters had to drop out because the school is expensive and far away for them. So they bring income into the family by weaving and they make 100 cues per month for weaving one blouse and a hundred cues a month is not even enough to buy food for two or three days for a family of this size in Guatemala. And the things that we try and supply for them for food is a hundred pounds of corn, rice, black beans for protein, oil for cooking, sugar and hyena which is a protein gruel and uh, seasoning for the rice, and sometimes coffee and sugar. Very, very basic commodities. And then they gather herbs in the fields, and most of our mothers don't have enough land to grow corn, so they don't have any uh, crops that they can grow. So Maria, tell us, um, has this helped her worries? <laughs> Very, very happy, very grateful for the, for the help with the food and uh, with the help for, for, with with her house. Before she, when they lived in the other house, she had often um, fear because that house did actually part of it did fall down because of an earthquake. So they they live they live there with fear in that house and they slept on the ground. So she is extremely she is very, very grateful and happy for, for all the help. The house that we're in that we built for her would be a house for the very poorest people in the United States, but here, for here in Guatemala, in the mountains, it's a very nice house. She's dry in the rain, and they're not sleeping on a wet floor. So we're happy we can help them. Lucky got texture. got texture. I'm so happy. There's the baby. Oh, let me see. How are you? 
Oh, she's coughing. She's coughing, I'm sure. They all kind and of she's warm, Jody. Just... So we first met this family because even though they have a husband, the mom was very desperate for a house. So she offered to exchange her son to a missionary friend of mine who had adopted from Guatemala. And so Laurie called me and said, we have a mother desperate for a house and she's desperate enough to offer her child in exchange for a house. So we built the house, but the um, mother-in-law owned the property and after we built it, the mother-in-law took it and kicked the family out. So they've been living here ever since. The, the issue, I will think, when it rains, all this area is wet. wet. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, it was sewage. And, also. and so you're <coughs> sleeping in a wet area. Right. It's like you're in, into a mall. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, she didn't work anymore here. Uh -huh. She went to the city to work as a maid. Brenda, uh, the uh, city? Oh, wow. And uh, wow. she got sick. And oh. so she, the, the mm. people she was working with told her to go. Mm. <coughs> he has a, a job right now, but it's not that much because the, the climate doesn't help to do tile. About how much is he making a week right now? Y cuando tiene trabajo, entonces, ¿cuánto le pagan la semana? Lo más que gana son 250. The most he has uh, been earning when there is a good week, it is uh, 250. 250 Q. And then her land stops about here. And you can see sometimes she tries to raise plants to sell. And um, used Western clothing. She can sometimes sell for a few cues. Last year we brought her some that she could sell. But even to sell used Western clothing would maybe make her a dollar or two a week. And with seven children to feed, it's not enough. and Mar Maricela say hello to you and we hope that you are in good health this letter is to present you my grateful uh, my grateful thank you let you know that we are thankful for you for your health and that you have given to my mom the, the, the life Pascuala, you know, and we as our daughters, we keep uh, going to the school, but my mom is sick and my father would like to have us keeping going to the school to reach, to reach the, the end that we would like, like graduation, you know. My, my, my father has a work, but sometimes we don't have enough. The groceries, uh, we appreciate it. We are soliciting you the help to keep going to school. 
uh, please help us to reach this, to reach or uh, our goal to be graduated. Attention, attention, attention of Elsa Ortiz Tambriz, Manuela Maricela Ortiz Tambriz. Killed or murdered. She received a call from someone in the States that her husband is ill and he's in the hospital uh, having problems, you know, that she didn't believe. Until later on, somebody called back and said, Your husband is dead. And how long ago? Two months. Two, three months. Have to. They have to agree each one in order to survive. She usually just buy two dollars a day. She has to go where somebody will hire her. So it has, it has to be close or it could be far.